And hello, we are live on our video for helps, or sorry, video, sound for video session. Today's the 19th of January, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit more about gain staging. You'll note last time again that we, we talked mainly about uh, noise over the last two sessions. First of all, during production, what things you can do in certain circumstances, obviously not all circumstances, to uh, manage noise, and then also some things that you could do in post-production to reduce at least the self-noise in your signal chain, and that's going to be in your microphone, your recorder, and things of that nature. But today, I wanted to turn to a slightly different topic, and that is setting up your gain. And uh, sometimes it's called gain staging, depending on the circumstances and what, what gear you're using. Um, but we're going to kind of keep it pretty simple this first time and talk about sort of the basics of setting up your gain. And to do that, um, I'm going to start with sharing my screen here. And we're going to start with a typical soundboard, just because it illustrates some of the things that you need to understand pretty nicely. So let me just share my screen here. Uh, let's share the entire screen. OK, here we go. All right, first of all, what we have here is a typical sound mixing board. And for those that aren't familiar with the, the whole concept of a mixing board, these are typically, of course, used in live sound reinforcement. So when you have someone on stage, you have one or several mics, um, you run the mics into this board, and then this board takes care of the preamplification, um, allows you to mix the different levels of the of the different mics, and then send them as a either a mono or a stereo signal up to the power amplifiers, which then you know make the sound the the signal even louder, and send it out to speakers or monitors, which then everyone can hear. So that's the basic idea of sound reinforcement. Very similar to recording. The only difference with recording is you're typically not sending it to a power amplifier. You're just sending it to a recorder at a line level. So um, all of that's covered in the course for those of you that have taken the course. <clears throat> but let's go into a little bit more detail about just setting up your gain here. Now, first of all, the way a mixing board is set up, and in fact, it's usually emulated on most recorders that we use for video and film, um, is that you have various channels. And on each channel, of course, you hook up a microphone. So here, for example, you can see we have mic one, mic two, mic three, and so forth. And the way it's oriented, or the way the whole thing is set up, is that each channel is oriented vertically. And well, again, we'll talk about how this applies on a recorder as well. So you input the mic right here, and this represents your signal chain. And just as a quick reminder, let me pull up my other screen here. And in fact, let me just come here to Google Plus page. You'll recognize this graphic, those of you that have taken the course. This is our signal chain graphic up here at the top of the uh, page. And what's represented here again is the signal chain. So you have the sound source, whatever that may be, coming into the microphone at a mic level signal. It goes into a preamplifier, which then boosts it up to a line level signal. This does some amplification. It then sends it to an analog to digital converter, which then stores it on some sort of media, whether that be a, maybe an SD card or a compact flash card or a hard disk or whatever it may be. So that is a very, very basic signal chain. And in fact, when we're talking here about this mixer, this also is a signal chain. The microphone comes in here, it captures the sound source, it sends a signal in here. Um, it goes through a gain stage here. This is where you get to set how much amplification takes place on that signal that's coming in from the microphone. So that's the first step. Now on a mixing board, you're typically going to have a few other things here. And very commonly here, for example, you'll have some aux sends. I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but in live sound, what you're typically doing is when there are performers on stage, they're, they're need, they need to hear themselves as well. They can't usually wear head, headphones. <laughs> so you have to send some of that signal back to some monitors that are sitting on stage pointed at them. That's what these are for typically. Um, then you have uh, an EQ plug in here. So if you wanted to do any sort of sculpting of the sound, 
maybe affect some of the higher frequencies, the mid frequencies, or the low frequencies, you can do that here. You then have a pan control, which says, if say for example, you're doing a stereo mix, left and right channels, um, you're mixing all these microphones together, you may want to only have mic one on the left channel. And so you could pan it all the way left or all the way right, but if you're doing mono, you just leave it in the center. You then have a mute control for this channel, a solo control, which means that if you're monitoring in headphones, you can turn all the other channels off so you can hear just this one. And then of course you have this here. This is called a linear fader. And what this does is it takes the signal, again, if you recall from the top here, you have the microphone input here. So the sound coming in from the microphone comes in here, and then it's amplified here in the gain stage. Then you have this fader, and typically when you're operating a, sound, a mixing board, you'll typically have this fader set up here at U, which stands for unity. And that's essentially saying, we're not gonna attenuate the signal at all. We're not gonna reduce the signal or boost the signal at all. We just wanna use it right at the, its unity setting. And so the only thing that's going to be controlling how loud, and I'm using the loud in quotes, it's technically not the right term, but how loud your overall signal is, or how strong your overall signal is, is this gain control. That's the one that's choosing how much amplification you're going to do. You can then use this fader to pull this channel back to reduce the overall loudness of that channel. And you know, obviously that's going to be helpful when you're mixing several different channels together. Maybe you have one of your talent who is a little bit louder than the others. So in that case, you may want to so you have the loud person on channel one and the less loud person on channel two. You'll have set up their gain, but you may notice that they change the loudness at which they're talking. Um, you may pull back this one a little bit. You may not want this person to sound quite as loud in the recording as, the, as talent number two. So you may pull the fader back a little bit. All right, so that's the general concept. Um, here. The thing that's important in digital recording is that you always want to avoid any sort of overloading of any individual channel. So if you, again, if you have a person that's a little bit louder and you're setting up your mics for the recording, you're going to want to set the gain to a lower level for the person that's louder than for the person that's not as loud. <laughs> and that's why it's very helpful, of course, to have separate gain controls or gain potentiometers. Anything that's like this, is, these little knobs are technically called potentiometers or POTS for short. Um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to set these and you'll have a, um, well, we don't see it so much on this board over here is where you see it. So if here is their meter, of course, and um, what you're aiming for here is, again, as I mentioned, you want the peaks for any individual channel to not be exceeding about minus 12 dB. So that's going to be somewhere between this minus 7 and this minus 10. Oh, wait a minute. Nope. Take that back. On this meter, it's a little bit different. Here is the, they suggest actually here, this is not the best example of a meter. Let me go find another meter that works a little bit better for our illustration purposes here. Um, I believe, here we go. We have the Zoom F8. Okay, on the Zoom, it's a little easier. You can see on this meter, we have, I believe that's minus 48 if my eyes are telling me the truth this morning here. You're aiming to get the peaks at minus 12. You'll notice they're actually running hotter here. Um, typically with a recorder like this, a relatively high, re high quality uh, recorder with high quality preamps, typically hitting the peaks right here at minus 12, that is the loudest parts. When you have someone talking into a microphone and you see that meter bouncing around, the hottest parts or the, the absolute highest, not the absolute highest, but the highest you typically want to go is about somewhere in the minus 12 range. What that prevents is the cases where things will start to clip. And that is if you hit zero here, what, will, what you'll hear through the preamplifier and the recording, more specifically the recording, is you'll hear distortion. So you wanna stay away from that in digital systems. And that's why we typically wanna aim for the loudest parts, the loudest peaks, transient peaks, to hit minus 12. Now, 
You can be even safer than that if you want. In fact, some uh, location sound mixers will only get their peaks up to minus 18 when they've kind of gotten a little bit more practiced and they know how to do that. <laughs> um, but I think for most purposes, minus 12, if you just have dialogue where it's gonna be someone speaking and there's not a good, lot of chance that someone's gonna be yelling or ch you know, really changing their volume a lot during the course of the recording, I usually like to aim for about minus 12 for my peaks. Now, you don't want to, you don't want to go quieter than that because what will happen then is that in post-production, you'll have to normalize the signal. And when you normalize and bring the overall dialogue up, that also brings the sound floor up. So you're going to have a lot more hiss and other issues like that. So that's why, again, I'm normally recommending people for dialogue will set your game so that the peaks are hitting minus 12. All right, I think we've kind of beat that subject up, so let's come back um, a little bit more. So the question then becomes, if you do that, if you set, it, you know, during your setup, when you're getting the talent all set up in their location, you know, their places, um, their marks, if you will, and uh, you have the microphone set up, again, microphones for production audio, in most cases, you're going to want those very close to the talent. So obviously, if they're wearing... Um, radio mics or wireless mics, lavalier mics, um, they'll be wearing those on their person, so you're pretty well set there. But other boom mics, for example, you're going to want those pretty close to them. I like to aim for about 40 centimeters from their mouth, if you can, because typically that way you're going to get much more signal and a lot less noise. So you're kind of optimizing things there. I've had a lot of people ask questions about, gosh, I'm still getting tons and tons of noise. Um, Microphone placement may be the number one thing for you. Um, if you've got that microphone sitting on top of a camera, it's going to be tough. You're going to get a lot more ambiance and room noise. Um, so it's best if you can get that microphone off the camera and closer to the talent. Um, let's see. So the question, yeah, becomes when would you ever use this linear fader? What's the point of that? Well, a fader is typically used when, again, when you're mixing multiple microphones together. And there may be some differences in terms of the overall levels of the different talent on the different mics. And uh, so you may pull one of them back a little bit. So the, this, it's important to remember too that these linear faders or any sort of fader, even sometimes they're potentiometers, so they're knobs like this. And in fact, that is the case on the Zoom F8 and Tascam's recorders, you know, the lower end recorders. Instead of these linear faders, they'll have potentiometers. And um, the thing to remember is that these are not changing, these are not modifying how much amplification is happening on that particular microphone. This is doing nothing else other than attenuating. And technically what that means is it's taking the amplified signal and amplifying it per your gain setting here. So whatever you set your gain up to, and this is called either a gain potentiometer or gain trim on a lot of our recorders, our field recorders that we use for film and video that's usually called gain trim or just trim. Sometimes um, they use more confusing terms like input <laughs> and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but this is the only thing, this is the thing that determines how much amplification happens to this signal that's coming in from the microphone. So this is what determines you know, how much amplification is used so that it comes up to a line level signal. So this is where you manage your, your peaks, and this is where you also manage um, and make sure that you're not so coming in so hot that anything is clipping. And then here, all this does is attenuates that, pre, that amplified signal. So this can just reduce it a little bit so that it sits quieter in the mix. So you're not using this to prevent clipping, you're using gain to prevent clipping. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Now, <clears throat> in terms of overall gain staging, um, again, I can just use this as, a, as an illustration here. Actually, I'm gonna switch over to using the example of the Zoom F8. So this is a field recorder, again, closer to what we're gonna be using when we're doing sound for film often. Um, and again, same concept applies here. Now, in the first version of the Zoom firmware that came out, these little potentiometers here, these knobs, these are gain trim. These are not faders. So this is completely controlling the amount of gain or the amount of amplification that's happening on each of the channels, the input channels from the microphone. And um, 
this is what you would normally set uh, up front before you start the recording. Once you start the recording, unless something really, really bad happens, <laughs> you typically aren't going to muddle with the gain setting or the gain trim. Normally, you kind of set that once and you let it go. The reason for that is that when you're cranking around the gain trim here, um, it's going to have a pretty significant effect on the sound of a particular mic. If someone's talking and you're changing this, that's going to change it quite a lot. And that's where ideally during a recording, you would be using a fader instead of the gain trim because a fader can be much more subtle, first of all. And um, again, you shouldn't need to, you know, once you've set up the level for that particular mic under normal circumstances, again, if someone's not changing the, the overall volume with what they're speaking uh, too drastically, um, then typically you're going to want to use a fader. So um, let me show you. Here is here's some screenshots, and I realize these are a little bit difficult to see, but I wanted to illustrate something interesting that Zoom changed on their recorder here. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Um, don't know if there is a way to zoom. Okay, we're going to do our best here. Well, in any case, so here is a picture of the screen of the Zoom F8. And this is the new firmware, firmware version 2.0. So if you're using this and you had specific questions about this, you'll want to update that, that firmware. But you now here, you can see there's a trim setting, a fader setting, and a pan setting. Now again, those, those correspond to what we were looking at before on this mixer here. You have a gain setting, you have your pan setting, and you have your fader. So that's a little bit more difficult to put all those controls into a tiny little interface like there is on most field recorders. Um, but that, this is how they've done it on the Zoom F8 is now using the menu control. And for those of you that aren't familiar, that'd be this guy right here. You can switch back and forth between what each of these potentiometers does. It can be your trim control, it can be your fader control, or it can be your pan control. And it defaults to trim. However, if you're doing in the midst of a recording, what you can use or do is use this menu control setting here to switch it over to fader. So once you've already set up your gain, you've done your gain staging, and you've started recording, if you do need to pull the fader back a little bit, you can do that. And that's just a matter of, again, using that menu knob control to move this little marker over to the fader. And now this becomes a fader control instead of a gain control. So that's how they've done it on the Zoom F8. Other recorders do it slightly different ways. Um, the Tascam DR60D and the 70D and the 701D and the <laughs> all of those. Let me just show you up here really quickly. They have a kind of a slightly different way that they've done it. We'll just pull up the 60D. They're all the same on the Tascam side. I pull this up here. Okay, this is a fader here in this particular implementation as I understand it. So the this is the left channel, this is the right channel or channel one and channel two. So the way this works on the Tascam is you actually go into the menu and there is a gain setting in the menu. And your options are low, mid, high, and high plus. So you, you might think, oh gosh, that's not very many settings. There are only four gain settings. And that's true, there are only four gain settings, but then you use this um, to, to fade just a little bit. So typically in most microphones, most condenser microphones that I'm using when I'm recording with this Tascam DR60D, so that's gonna be shotgun microphones, it's gonna be um, anything that requires phantom power is typically a condenser, condenser microphone. Uh, most lavaliers are also condenser microphones. In almost all cases I'm finding with most people, I will set the gain level to mid, and then I'll use this fader here to kind of fine tune the overall source. Um, and what's not clear to me, and that's what these uh, lower end devices are a little bit tricky at, is that I, I think this is a fader, but I'm not 100% sure because they've not made that entirely clear. <laughs> it actually may be a gain trim knob. Um, so sometimes that's how things are set up where you have a menu setting for the gain level and then the potentiometer or the knob becomes a gain trim. We're actually fine tuning the gain level. 
and then there is either a separate fader or no fader at all. So I think in the case again of the Tascam, I think this is a fader, but it might be a gain trim, not 100% sure. All right, so that's how um, I would set things up. Just as a quick review here, again, you're going to get the microphone, first of all, placed at the right distance from your talent. Then you're going to set the gain for the channel, for that channel. And in this case on the Zoom F8, this will typically in the default setting will be set as the gain trim. So that's how you'll set the gain is use this here. Then once you start recording, you'll use this knob to switch over to the fader and then you'll adjust the fader throughout the course of the recording to kind of fine tune the overall levels. But again, if you're trying to prevent clipping, which again, we have to always concern ourselves with when we're doing digital recordings, it is the gain trim or the gain that you'll use to pull those peaks back. And again, again, when you're setting that gain up, you're going to be for dialogue aiming for a minus 12 dB peak right here. So that you'll have a loud enough signal that won't have a lot of noise in it, um, but it's not so loud that it gets distorted and starts to clip once the signal hits zero dB here. Now, gain staging is actually a specific term that uh, can refer to a whole lot more than this. And that is especially in cases, for example, if we have a more sophisticated signal chain. So for example, this is a very simple signal chain. You have a microphone, it goes through a preamplifier, which goes through an analog to digital converter, which then gets recorded. But things can get a lot more sophisticated than that. So for example, if you are using this Tascam here, you're bringing in a condenser mic, say for example, a shotgun microphone into this channel. But then on the other side of the recorder, you also have this camera output and you are sending this line into your camera. You now have two different amplifiers in your signal chain. You have the Tascam itself, it's taking the mic level signal here, right here, here's a bigger picture. <laughs> um, it's taking that and it's preamplifying it and bringing it up to line level but then you're also sending that amplified signal, that line level signal out to the camera. Well, the camera also has a microphone preamplifier and you're bringing this into that microphone preamplifier on your camera. So you're getting another stage of gain. And that's why I think what's important if you want the cleanest recording is you want to rely on the, the amplifier in your signal chain that is most likely or is the highest quality and therefore most likely to produce the cleanest signal. So for example, if you have a DSLR and you have a Tascam recorder like this, I would typically re uh, rely on the Tascam to do the cleaner amplification. So I would do my gain, my set my gain here and get the levels right here and then send this signal out again through a 3.5 millimeter cable into your camera. And I would set the input gain or the input level for the microphone on the camera to its lowest setting. And you'd be surprised if you do a little experimenting with that, um, what a huge difference that can make. So if you actually say, for example, you just sort of set the, the gain level to not very high on this. So say maybe your peaks are hitting minus 24 on the Tascam, and then you send the signal out to your camera, and then you send the microphone input level on the camera, you set that to um, you know somewhere in the middle range, and that gets your levels to exactly where you want them. Say, for example, you get, again, you're hitting minus 12, but you'll notice that that signal is a lot noisier than if you did more of the gaining up with a Tascam recorder. So when you have multiple gain stages like that, a recorder and a camera, for example, which is going to be most common for us shooting sound for video, that's when you're probably going to want to do some experimenting ahead of time to figure out which of your preamplifiers is cleaner and where you're going to want to do more of your gain up or your gain staging. So let's uh let's take a little break here we do have um patrick joining us here today from the uk and patrick i just wanted to check in with you here and see if there are any questions are you still with us now it looks like you may have had to pull back he's still online but <laughs> i just wanted to check in and see if he had any questions and also if anyone watching has any questions i'll check the q a panel here it looks like we're clear on the q a panel all right, if you guys do have questions, love to hear those and you're welcome to post those and you know, even we can address them after the session here. Uh, but just want to take a break there and <laughs> make sure we're all here still together. So let me, let me just finish this up here. Go ahead and share that screen again. And 
pull up our browser again. Okay. Okay. So again, when you're setting things up, you want to get your mic placed first. You want to adjust your gain. As the talent is speaking, you're watching your meter to make sure that their peaks don't exceed minus 12 dB. Now, I guess there is one thing I should mention here. This is assuming that you're going to do some audio post-processing. If your peaks are only hitting minus 12, that's not broadcast ready. Um, that sound signal is going to be a little on the quiet side. And, uh, you know, if you're talking about most, most of the voices that I've recorded and you're hitting your peaks at minus 12 in the recording, that's going to make an overall loudness that just isn't quite present enough. But the whole idea here is that during production, you got to save yourself from clipping and distorting from those peaks hitting zero dB and introducing distortion into the signal, which you cannot effectively remove once you've captured it in the recording. You also want to avoid getting a signal that's too quiet or too weak, um, where the peaks are maybe only hitting minus 30, uh, because then you'll have to pull that up, normalize it in post, and you'll introduce all sorts of noise because then the dialogue is sitting down closer to the noise floor. Um, so these are just some some things to keep in mind that I wanted to run through really quickly. I think this is a rather this is where a little bit more of the art comes in <laughs> to the whole process of recording sound for video and film, where you know a lot of people when they first get started are kind of struggle to get that set up right, and then once they download it to their computer to do the post production and and sync it up to their video and. Um, it's rather unsatisfying because you're finding, ah, I've got all this noise now, or I've, I've got all this distortion um, because I was running the signals too hot. So definitely kind of, you know, you, you have to do some practice here and some experimenting, but the most critical thing is getting your talent into their, onto their marks, whether they're sitting or standing or wherever they are, they are, getting the microphone set up so that they're at a good distance. Again, I mainly aim for 40 to 60 centimeters from the mouth of the talent for most microphones, except dynamic microphones. So if you have like a news reporter, they're going to be using a, typically a handheld microphone or a lavalier microphone. If they're using a handheld, they're going to need to get that even closer. And that's typically going to be a dynamic mic, which is not as sensitive. Um, so that's the one exception. But typically for boom mics, shotgun, uh, maybe a cardioid mic that's boomed above the talent, in those cases, 40 to 60 centimeters away. Set the gain as the talent is talking in their regular voice. And that's a, tr that's, that's a challenge. Here's a little tip on that front. <laughs> a lot of times if you just say, hey, talk in your normal voice, just say anything you want to say, or even if you're asking them questions. The interesting thing is that if they think the camera is not rolling, they often will not talk as loud. <laughs> and that can create problems because then you've set your gain to a level that's very different than what you're going to need during the recording. So typically what I do is I say, we actually have the cameras rolling now. Um, we're just gonna do some tests here for a couple of minutes while we get everything set up. So I, I'm, I'm gonna roll the camera and we may end up using this footage. Um, and then you start asking them some questions and getting them engaged and talking. And while they're doing that, then I set the gain level. So just a little something to consider if you are having that problem where they're not talking at their normal volume <laughs> while you're getting set up that can be helpful if they think the camera's rolling or if you actually do roll the camera um, just so that they actually talk in the voice that they're going to be using and at the, you know, modulating at the level they're going to be talking uh, during the actual recording. So I hope that was helpful there. So there's a quick overview of setting up your game structure, um, especially, you know, again, also in the context of cases where you're going to, to use a recorder to do the preamplification and you'll send that signal out to your camera. Some considerations there. Again, you want the highest quality preamplifier to do the main work and the lower quality preamplifier to do very little of the work because those lower quality preamplifiers will add noise to the overall signal. All right, and it looks like we've hit our time for today. So let's come back to our session. There we are. I wanted to thank everyone who uh, sent questions up front um, and who have sent questions in via email. If you have any other questions, if you're enrolled in the course, of course, you know my email address. You're welcome to email me at any time and we can work through any challenges or issues that you're facing. And uh, of course, anyone is welcome to put a comment here on the Google Plus page um, or over on the YouTube page. I don't uh, I don't check that YouTube channel as much. This is not my normal YouTube channel. This is a separate YouTube channel. Um, this is the Google, the, sorry, the Curtis Judd Audio 
YouTube channel, which is separate. This just gets these uh, help sessions. Um, but if you put it over on the Google Plus page, I'm more likely to see it and respond to anything that you may be um, up against, see any of the challenges you're facing, and love to help out there. So I hope that was helpful for everyone. If you've got questions, again, leave those down below, and we will be back with you again next week. Take care. Happy recording.